Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, I'm going to be making a scroll rivet bucking bar. Now, this was shown to me by a gentleman by the name of Clay Spencer. If you don't know him, he teaches down at the John C. Campbell Folk School all the time. I also believe he's very heavily involved in the Rocky Mountain Blacksmiths Guild. And uh, <coughs> he was an apprentice of the late Francis Whitaker. Now, it would be my suggestion that you research those names. I'll try to put some links to bios or something on those people there down below if you don't know who those guys are. All very talented Smiths. Um, and uh, I was great to see this demonstration. So I got to do a traditional joinery class. And in this traditional joinery class, I was introduced to a scroll bucking bar. And that is for essentially a rivet. Let me hammer on this a little bit here. We're just upsetting this because I don't have enough mass in my bar here to take and drive it to put a square hardy on the end. So I need to upset some material. The material I'm working with is a piece of one inch round or 25 mil round. And I believe, I believe this is a 1080 steel or somewhere around that level of carbon content. It might be closer to 1075. It spark tests the trick uh, and very similar to like a 1080 or a 1075. So I will heat treat this as in I will water harden it and then temper it, although that is not needed. Uh, later on, I'll do that. But the main purpose of this thing is to be able to get in between scrolls, where scrolls come around when you're riveting two of them together, or to hold collars in place while you rivet two scrolls together. It is a very handy tool to add to your arsenal. Now speaking of the Rocky Mountain Blacksmiths Guild, there's a guy on YouTube by the name of John Switzer at Black Bear Forge. Most of you who watch my channel on the regular basis know John and I, we complement each other's channels quite a bit. And currently, as of the recording of this video, he's going through a little series like I did quite some time ago on making rivet set tools. And I highly encourage you to go check out his video on that. He's making both bottom set tools and top set tools. And I think that you would find a lot of information there from John Switzer at Black Bear Forge and that that could be very handy to you. Now to address the trolls in the room because they might be here. Uh, you may think that I'm making this video because John Switzer at Black Bear Forge is making riveting videos. No, it is not. In fact, I've, made, I've already made a set about a year ago, uh, a rivet setting video. I even made them for air tools as well. So neither one of us is copying. If you listen to his very first video, what he is doing in that video is he actually, in that video, he talks about how he needed a rivet and he didn't have the right setting tool for it. So that's why he's making um, the correct size river, rivet setter tool combo for himself. There's nothing pre-Madonna about any of this. There's nothing magical. Professional blacksmiths make tools for themselves all the time. So, and oftentimes, we all need the same tools. All right, I'm starting to get that upset quite a bit. And now I'll draw down a taper on the end. It never fails whenever you do a pretty simple, or what I like to call a generic tool, 
uh, that there's always somebody that gets in comment sections like John and I's comment sections and accuses us of copying one another or copying some other Smith on YouTube and uh, rivet set tools and especially what I'm doing there's nothing magical about these these have been in use for thousands of years so um, don't get hung up on that just because it's on YouTube doesn't mean that someone on YouTube came up with the ideal <laughs> It's been part of the blacksmithing trade for a very long time. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and draw down a bit of a point there. I'm gonna reduce some of the heat coming out of this. I'll need as much air. And now we're gonna draw down this to a bit of a square. I'm trying to hit all the way through the piece if I can. bottom of this piece doesn't really matter. It's just made to fit in the anvil. So just as long as you get a taper that'll fit through the anvil, hardy hole, you'll be doing pretty good. As long as you get a square bit that works out good for your purposes. Now I'm going to go back through and shorten this up quite a bit. After this is all said and done, once I get about the right amount of mass to slip down through the hardy hole of the anvil. Let's get that hot some more. Okay, I'd like to take this moment to thank my channel sponsors. That's you all out there. Yes, you watching this video. Thank you so much uh, for watching the video to this point. The watch time really does help out channels. Anytime that you watch my channel, John Switzer's, Daniel Moss over at Trust Me, I'm a Blacksmith, uh, Tim at Big Dog Forge, any of the, your favorite channels that you may watch, the watch time really does go a long way to help their channels grow. Um, and also help them to produce more content when you are nice enough to watch an ad like that. Also, I highly suggest that you check out channels like mine and others, uh, Teespring stores and things like that. Those all go to take and help the, the artists at hand in the channel, the person who's working on that channel, be able to produce more content uh, free for YouTube and for the masses. So again, Thank you for being a sponsor of this video just by watching it. God bless each and every last one of you out there. Thank you so much. And by the way, I don't say that lightly. That is a sincere thank you. I really do greatly appreciate every last one of you. Okay, we got this good and hot again. Now I'm just trying to work this down to roughly one inch square bar. It's almost there. I'm gonna keep working it and we'll get there eventually. One more heat on that and that ought to just slip in. Now once I get this to where it just slips into the piece, uh, into the hardy hole, I'm going to go ahead and upset, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to upset more of the piece beyond that square part because I want there to be a good maybe two inches or so of material to slip down inside the hardy hole. That'll provide a really nice base for a wedge. 
The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have it come up a little bit, maybe stand off of here, maybe four to six inches, and then it's gonna bend at a nice right angle, 90 degree elbow, and then that's where we'll have our actual rivet set portions set in. So to speed this process up, I'm gonna go ahead and clip out at this point. Again, I'm just doing more of the same that you've seen here. I will come back to you as soon as we are ready to take and do the next step, which is drive in the rivets themselves, the different size heads of the rivets that are gonna be going into the other end of the bar. So I'll be right back with you here in a moment. Okay everyone, so here we are. I've got the piece drawn to where it fits like a wedge down into the hardy hole here of the anvil. Um, and now I'm going, I've got this piece heated up and I'm going to take and cut it off where I don't need anymore. Now I'm gonna end up drawing this piece out after the fact, so I'm getting it up pretty darn hot here. I'm leaving about six inches or say 150 mil in between that paper that we made on the end and that upset in the end here. This should give me plenty of material because 25 mil material really does stretch out quite a bit. So this is plenty enough to do what I need to do. And I'm not looking to take and bring this thing terribly up above the anvil face. I want it to still be at a comfortable working height. So that is important to me. Gotta get a re-grip here, put these tong reins back on. Excuse me, I'm talking into the mic a little closer. And around and around we go. I'm trying to cut mostly to center. closer you get cut to center, the less dress up work you're going to have. Ultimately, ah, twist it right off. This here I'll set off to the side of the forge. Usually I set it up on top of the forge, that way it can take its time to slowly heat again. Remove your hot cut. Don't need that hammer anymore. And now it's basically ready to go. So I'll show you guys how this looks. Boom, fits right in there. And now it's just sticking up off the anvil like this in no, none such fashion. So now we need to take and draw out a taper out of this piece. And we're gonna do that in a flat asymmetrical taper, not a symmet not symmetrical, but an asymmetrical taper. So I'm gonna heat this whole piece back up again. Now I'm gonna point this out now while I'm at it. You do not need to take and heat. You can go incremental in stages when you're working with heavier stock like this. Um, whenever you're working with one inch and up, Take smaller bites of material to work out first. It makes it a lot easier. Versus trying to just get the whole giant piece hot and trying to work the whole piece at once. Um, you are a human being, you're not a machine. I'll take off my earphones here. Yes, I do wear earring protection in the shop usually, just not while I'm demonstrating because I can't hear myself talk and then it sounds like I'm yelling at you. So, we're getting that up to heat. It's almost there. We're gonna start drawing our taper. And you can do this taper on the horn of the anvil or you can do it on the flat. 
whichever one you feel more comfortable with or whatever seems to be more expedient for you. The reason for drawing a taper down on this piece is because we want it to be able to fit through our scroll work. Now I'm dressing it up on the sides, but most of the tapers all one-sided on this piece. I'm dressing up the sides ever so slightly, but most of the taper, again, is one-sided on this piece. All right, so let me see what I can do here. On, give me a second. Ah. And I'm right back with you. Get that piece good and hot. With stuff like this, you want to work it at a fairly high heat just because the amount of work that's here. Take your time. Remember to breathe through your heating and beating here. And since this is high carbon steel, it's not going to want to move as ready, readily available. For you. So there we go, we've got a good bit of this material down. And now I'm gonna start working it down into that asymmetrical look. Hopefully you guys can see that there. So we're trying to draw this down, trying to keep this flat in line with this. We haven't done a good job here, so I'll have a little bit of correction work to do on this to get this re-squared up, but no big deal. Now we're gonna draw it all down to one side while trying to reduce the thickness. I'll be right back with you once that's good and hot. Okay, now that we've got this piece nearly hot, now's the time to take and talk about the ball punches that we're gonna be using for this rivet setter. So. These here are just simple mild steel ground to a radius that is appropriate. So diameter and radius that you want for your rivet head itself. I've got several sizes here, all ranging in different sizes. Uh, they will all make different size depressions and that's gonna be crucial in this piece. I'm gonna finish cleaning it up a little bit. It's basically the thickness and the dimension that I need. So I'm gonna finish cleaning it up with a few more hammer with a little more hammer work here for you. And then after I've got that done, then it'll be time to actually heat this whole thing back up and then start stamping in the piece out towards the end. Once that's done, that end I'll allow to cool and I'll heat back up closer to the shank that'll go in the hardy hole and I will make my final bend over after that point. It's a lot easier to do that now to make the bend at that point than it is to take and do it later. I wanted to make that profile just a little more narrow. So I'm gonna do that now. That way it can really get in there in between pieces.
you want to go ahead and clean up this piece the best you can. Now with planishing blows and do whatever you'd like to do to it to make sure it's a nice clean looking fitting before you stamp these pieces in. That'll be immense value to you later. There'll be less grind work you have to do and you can leave it an as forged finished tool. Alright, there we go. We got a nice asymmetrical taper. The piece is forged nicely. Obviously that little end bit there, the little rag on the end, we'll clean that off later on. But the piece is forged cleanly enough for my liking. Now we're going to heat the whole piece back up and we're going to come down and we're going to start working from the tip back to put in those little dimples. So clear out at the tip, I'm going to use my smallest ball punch. This is roughly quarter inch round, uh, just a hair over quarter inch, if you will. So that's approximately six mil. And I'm going to grip it in a pair of tongs because, well, it gets mighty hot. <laughs> so there we have it. So I'm going to let that get set right here for a second while I get another pair of tongs and I get them latched on here. Okay, that's good and hot. I'm going to come out here in just a second once I get my tong clip on. That way I can hold the tongs between my legs while I manage this other pair of tongs to drive in the little ball. So here we go. Nice and hot. Using the third hand, going out close to the end, but not quite. We're going to drive that right down home. And that will now be our first little rivet hole, rivet head holding thing. I'm going to set that out of the way. I'm going to grab the next size up, which I believe will be this one. And while I still got a little bit of heat in this, I'm going to go ahead and try to mark it out. I'm going to come back up the shank just a little bit from the first one. And I'm going to put it, start putting it in a depression. That's working pretty good. Good enough. So now we've got two clean depressions right there cool that off because we don't like to ruin the temper in our tools. And now we're ready to heat this piece up for the next, for the next section. So as you can see, I've done all this at the anvil. You don't need no fancy tools, equipment. You just need heat, flame, and enough material to be able to fit in the hardy hole and bend over and just a few simple punches that are ground to a specific shape. Again, if you make these little ball punches, I have a video. I'll try to link that up in the description down below. I have a whole video series. It's called the Riveting Series that this will be a part of that playlist. Uh, if you want to know how to take and make the ball punches yourself, that I highly suggest you check out that series. So now as you see, the thicker the rivet gets, we're going back because it's going to be a heavier rivet and so therefore you're going to probably be putting more energy in it to form a rivet. Uh, when you're clamping two pieces of scroll work together, it needs to be closer and closer to this hardy shank in order to be well supported. Okay, we've got this good and hot. I'm going to grab the other ball here, hold it between the legs, little third hand control about the same spacing as the one prior to it and there we go give it a whack keep going until you get that depression in there just like you like it that'll suit what you need and now I'll cool that off I was going to go bigger than that but I don't think I'm going to just for the simple fact that I don't use that size very much so now I'm going to be very careful 
and this is getting a slight bow to it this way. It's got a slight arch to it this way because we've displaced metal from the top side down. So I'm gonna flip that over and be very gentle and we're just gonna hammer that back to straight. We're not trying to deform or elongate those holes. We want those to stay the same, but we want that to be nice and flat across there. Also, it is good if you go ahead and punch these in a little deeper than you need, because ultimately we're gonna grind this. I'll grind this later and clean it up. And so it's good if those holes are a lot deeper um, than what you need right now. They really help out later because it's gonna shallow up as you grind a little material away. So now we'll heat this whole piece back up and we'll get this thing bent. We're gonna heat the heavy portion, the heavy end now. Because we want it to bend right in there. Okay, now that we have this piece nice and hot, we're gonna go ahead and pull it from the fire and I'm going to chill the portion that's supposed to go into the hardy hole. Now this is a big no-no usually for anything that's high carbon steel, especially when it's hardenable, obviously, by it being hard carbon steel. But in this case, it's gonna have a couple normalization cycles and the part that's going in the hardy hole is not overly critical. It will never be a hardened portion of this whole deal. So the only the parts that'll be getting hardened and tempered will be the top portion that the work will actually be done. And that's more or less not for harden, hardness sakes, that's more for abrasion resistance or deformation. We don't want this thing to eventually just bend down on us and droop as we hammer along. So we're gonna go ahead and cool off the part that goes in the hardy hole of the anvil. And then we're gonna put that in the anvil and then we're gonna just go ahead, give this thing a couple big whacks. And we're gonna bend that right over. Now, you might be asking yourself, really, Roy, what's the advantages of this? And what the advantages of this tool is, now the one that Clay Spencer showed, it was actually on a long bar that you could just mount in the vise or someone could hold or you could set on the floor and rivet a piece in, peen a piece in to back up your rivets. But the real advantage to this is being able to slip two pieces of material like this, set a rivet on it, right? So you set a rivet up here, you slip your one scroll through, this goes through the scroll, you set it down and then you set your larger bar stock on top and you peen it down and you rivet set it. So this is all to take and hold up the bottom of the rivet, just like this that we made in the riveting series. This goes in the hardy hole, but as you can see a problem with this rivet header, is there's no way of slipping a scroll through it. So this allows you to get this over the edge of your anvil or lock it in the vise securely, and that will help you out greatly. So now I'm gonna brush this down so it looks good. It's at what I want. Good thickness all around. I think this is gonna make a great tool. So there you have it. So there's the forging portion of it. Now, there will be a part two in this if you wanna see the hardening and tempering step. I suggest that you watch part two. When it's available, it will be on the end screens coming up here in just a second, and you can click on that video and you can go check that out. Uh, this portion of the video is actually done right now because we got the forging portion done but I do want to show you how to take and heat treat this weird piece. So that will be in a separate part uh, so I can do a thorough job of it. Anyways, that's it for today. Thank you if you stuck with me. Uh, if you stuck with me this long, go ahead and say rivets are cool. And uh, that's our secret little password there.
If you're new to the channel, thank you for being here. Hopefully you'll consider subscribing and all that fun stuff. Uh, I always greatly appreciate the support in that way. And as always, thank you all so much to my regular supporters of these, of these videos and this content. As always, God bless you, and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.